Hello, good evening. You're watching The View from Vauxhall Road, where it's finished here, Hemel Hempstead Town 2, Wellin United 3. That old cliche of it's a game of two halves certainly rang true here this afternoon. Hemel Hempstead going in 2-0 up at the break and unfortunately finishing the game 3-2. It was also a game of dramas, two penalties, a red card and uh, joining me is Kyle. So Kyle, wh what did you think of the game? Definitely a game of two halves. Um... Second half, we knew they were going to come out flying because that's what you do when you're 2-0 down. Everyone goes to win the game. And for them to score within five minutes was a was an eye-opener. But then to score two other goals two minutes later, me personally, I think that's an embarrassment. At no level, you should let the game turn over that quick. This is a men's man's game. No matter what you do, you should bite it down show a bit of heart to make sure they don't score another goal if they have got one goal. But to get two goals like that, personally, that's an embarrassment. You've had some time with the lads in the dressing room at full time. Mm -hmm. What is the mood like in there this afternoon? As you'd, as you'd expect, the mood is down. Tensions are high. There's a lot of, lot of talk, a lot of arguing. Everyone's a bit angry, obviously, everyone's a bit upset. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of tension. But the only people you can blame is yourself. But everyone's got to come to realise it. And if we look at the first half, you know, there were some positives uh, to draw from in that first half. And I know that, you know, the game's gone now uh, and, and that doesn't, the first half is not going to change the result. But we did see uh, the likes of Josh come back, and he got his go early on in the in the uh, in the first half. We got the penalty, which really solidified our lead. There were there were moments in in the game that that we can kind of look at and go, okay, yeah, there there are some opportunities there going forward. Yeah, um, every game there's going to be good moments, no matter what goes on in the game. But at the end of the day, you don't look at their good moments. No one's going to go back and see the good moments we've done. When we've, when we've been turned over that quick, all we're going to be thinking about is how we've been turned over. Cause it, so now we've lost like that, or any loss, it doesn't take an hour or two to get over. The next couple of weeks we'll be talking about what we're going to do to improve. We're not going to talk about the goals we've just scored, how we've scored it. We're going to talk about how to not concede goals like that. So good things happen in each game. Fair enough, it was decent. It was good to see Josh out there. Um good for Jordan to step up and take the penalty but that doesn't mean nothing if you come around and lose like that Do results like this really build team mentality going forward do you need these bad moments in games in a season to actually rally some of those players because we, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago this is a very new team mm -hmm. new characters are coming into the team and not that that means that there's an excuse for poor performances but Will players look back at this moment and say, we don't want to be like, we don't want that feeling that we had against Welling? Yeah. I, f I think you do need these type of games as much as you don't want these type of games. Because sometimes, I'm not sure as players, sometimes people might get a bit comfortable, no matter whether it's the start of the season, last, end of the season. So everyone needs a wake-up call. Um, maybe it's, it's best we've got it early on in the season. Maybe not. Um, but things like games like this it should not be happening I can't stress enough it shouldn't be happening to whoever um, but it maybe it's, maybe we bounce back and react 10 times better and maybe get more goals and concede less but we just have to see going forward and I can see from the, the emotion that you're sort of portraying here having even not played the game you know you care about this club and about this team and you want them to do well how frustrating is it for you from the sidelines when you can see what's happening but you can't do anything about it? Um, I think it's more frustrating watching the boys go down like this. Um, especially knowing my circumstances, it adds to it as well. Um, but it's, it is a game of two perspectives because it's like I can see where people are going wrong but in the game you might get tunnel vision, you might not see what other people are seeing. So maybe, maybe if I was playing as well, I might have gone through the same mistakes. So I can't blame anyone. Um, but going forward, hopefully no one forgets what we've gone through. 
because that's the biggest mistake we could make. We could forget. Um, and hopefully next game we play, we always have this in the back of our mind. Well, I'm sure one person who will be bitterly disappointed with how the game panned out is manager Mark Jones. And I caught up with him a short while after full time. Mark, a, uh, a very disappointing defeat, certainly a game of two halves. How do you even begin to sum up, certainly the first 10 minutes of that second half, but the game overall? Well, yeah, it hurts. You know, it's uh, incredibly disappointing for us. Um, we had a mad six minutes there at the start of the second half, which has ultimately cost us the game. Um, yeah, this defeat is going to take a while to get over because uh, of the way that we lost it, being 2-0 up at half-time. You know, you should be good enough to see that game out. We knew that Wellin were going to give a reaction. The manager obviously made two substitutes and we spoke to the boys at half-time that we were expecting a reaction. Uh, I think the first goal, you know, is a, is a terrible one. You know, I'd, I'd have to see it again. The referee needs to be 100% sure if he's going to start giving penalties for sort of grappling in the box. But that is the second time that we've, uh, you know, conceded a, a penalty by, by that type of marking it's not something that we're instructing the lads to do um, so you know that I'd have to look at that back again to see if it was a penalty um, you know the second goal was just a sort of simple crossing uh, from our left hand side I think it's sort of gone over the centre half's head uh, the Adi Aziz I think gets the, the, lays it back and it's a good finish um, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. You know, we've sort of um, thrown it away, to be quite honest with you. You know, congratulations to Wellin. You know, for them, it's a fantastic result to come back and win 3-2. But from our point of view, we've thrown it away. When the opposition go down to 10 men as well, with about 25 minutes to go, um, you know, you, again, that puts more pressure on us to get something from the game. I thought we actually got into some really very, very good positions in the last 10 minutes. And then we're shooting over the crossbar, miss hitting it, missing glorious chances. Um, I think, you know, when that ball dropped to Alfie Williams on his left foot there in the dying seconds, I was expecting the net to ripple, to be honest. I don't think he's quite sort of caught it and give credit to the keeper there for making the save. Uh, but we had more than enough opportunities in the last part of the game to get something, to score a goal. But our technique let us down at vital moments. Having said that, was that really the defining moment in the game? Probably not. The defining moment is that is that six minutes of utter madness from 50 minutes to 56 when they we've gone from 2-0 up to 3-2 down. And it's very, very hard to explain. And um, I, um, I'm extremely disappointed. I understand the fans' frustration. I understand everybody at the club's frustration because, uh, you know, if you lose a game of football, you know, sometimes you can take it, you know, you, you play well or whatever, it's a tight game, but to be 2 nil up and lose it in the way we have is extremely poor. I'm not going to make any excuses. At the end of the day, the buck stops with me. I'm the manager. I selected the players. I selected the sort of shape today. Funnily enough, I thought it was working well first 15, 20 minutes. I didn't think we finished the half particularly well, even though we scored the penalty, but there was sloppiness creeping into our game the second part of the first half so yeah look it's a tough one to take it's going to take a while for me to get over this but we have to go again when you look at a defeat like this you know going in at half time 2-0 like you say those crazy six minutes do you look at that as individual errors or do you look at that as a whole collective mentality? I don't think you can pin the, 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 you know, uh, the blame on individuals. We're a team. We're all in it together. You know, I won't sort of come on here and completely throw all of the players under the bus. You know, it's, um, you know, we're in it together, as I say. But it's, yeah, it's, you don't want to give the opposition any encouragement and, you know, as I say, the referee's given a penalty. Whether it is a penalty, I, I don't know. But when you've sort of been warned about grappling, he's actually pulled the lads together and said, look, you know, I'm watching. To then sort of, you know, the referee point to the spot, you know, you just don't want to sort of do anything that gives him a decision to make. Uh, but he has done so. Obviously, then that gives them a bit of a lift, scoring so early in, in, in the first half, a second half, sorry. But we have to give a much better reaction than that. You know, we... We, we, we didn't stand up. I didn't see enough sort of uh, um, determination out there to sort of get, you know, see, to, to win the game. And, uh, 
yeah, we've um, snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, I think. And it's the second game in which the second half performance has defined the game. Is that something you're going to be working on in the coming days and weeks? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, you know, I'll have to look back at it again. It's always a fine margins in sport. You know, uh, the result is all that matters in football. You know, you can look at how you play and look at, you know, moments in the game. But ultimately, you, you know, everybody will judge you on the result. And uh, that's two games that we've um, we've lost now. We've obviously conceded six goals. And, uh, you know, you look at those types of stats and it quite clearly isn't good enough. Uh, we changed it today a little bit and went with a back three. Uh, we've been playing sort of a 4-3-3 three, three shape the first three games. We went back to a 3-5-2 and I thought we actually started the game pretty well. Great start, two, min two minutes, goal. Josh Castiglione on his first um, first game back. And uh, I was reasonably pleased with how things were looking, but it is a worry how we've gone from being sort of in reasonable control to then completely sort of not in control, which, you know, is it a, a soft mentality, um, a little bit of a soft underbelly, possibly. That's something that I've got to look at. Uh, but as I say, you know, mad six minutes. I don't think I've sort of... I'm scratching my head, sort of trying to think if I seen anything like that, you know, as a manager. I don't remember any of my teams conceding that, you know, goals like that so quickly. I'll come back to it, though. We actually created some really good sort of bits in the last 10 minutes that we should have scored from, you know, and then all of a sudden, if you get something from the game, it still isn't a good result for you all, being 2-0 up. But, you know, you could say that we kept going. But, yeah, look... I'm um, very sort of frustrated, Dan. I'm a little bit sort of, um, you know, obviously down with what I've just witnessed. And uh, it's certainly going to take us, uh, you know, a couple of days to try and sort of work that one out and then go again. So there we are then. There's the thoughts of manager Mark Jones and joining me in the studio is Josh Castiglione. Josh, you managed to get on the score sheet today, but obviously the, the, game, the game in itself was very, very disappointing. Yeah, obviously on a personal note, it is nice to uh, finally get on the score sheet for Hemel, but at the end of the day, it means nothing coming away from a game with with a defeat to our name. Um, obviously, the first half, scoreline-wise and performance in parts was very encouraging, um, and we said in the dressing room that we knew they were going to come out second half strong. They made a couple changes, they changed their shape, um, and... We knew what we had to do and we just didn't execute it. Allowed them back into the game with one goal, uh, with a penalty. Um, and then we just capitulated from there, which is very uncharacteristic um, and very disappointing. When games are on the knife edge of 2-0, 2-0 is a difficult scoreline at half-time. The first goal goes in. From a player's perspective on the field, do you start to feel that momentum swing in the opposition's favour? And did you feel that today? Yeah, massively. Um, and that's something that we spent probably three quarters of the half-time team talk talking about. Um, you know, like you just said there, 2-0 is a dangerous scoreline. But if you can get through the first 15, 20 minutes of the second half unscathed with not allowing them any momentum or efforts on goal and just sort of playing in the right areas when you need to, you can nullify what they're looking to do straight away. Um, but as soon as a goal does go in you do naturally feel a momentum switch change um, and it puts you naturally on the back foot. But that's no excuse for what we've put out there in the second half there. Like, that's just simply not good enough from all of us. It was a rather physical game today. Um, probably one of the more physical games I've seen recently, certainly at this level. Teams are not only also trying to you know, use tactics, but they're using off-the-ball tactics in terms of their physical presence. We've seen a red card today. Was it tough out there in terms of up, being up against that or did you feel like the team could ride that storm? Uh, listen, at the end of the day, that's part and parcel of non-league football. Um, I think, yeah, obviously we all know about the beautiful game, but you have to, every single team has to have that ugly side within the dressing room um, because you know when you go 2-0 up that you have to kill the game, you have to time waste, you have to sort of win fouls and do bits and bobs in the right times, obviously you're not going to do it in the first half, but when suitable to do so. Um, but 
yeah, like I say, there's 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 not going to be a game that we play in this league that's not going to be a physical battle. Um, and for the first half, we won more than they did, which is obviously reflected in the scoreline. And in the second half, they come and physically beat us up, to be honest with you, um, from front to back. And yeah, like I say, and when you win your physical battles, like I say, as part of non-league football, you're going to more often than not come out with a positive result. And finally, what what is the mood in the dressing room? Obviously, you've been in there together for a good sort of 15, 20 minutes after the game. What, what's been said? What's the thoughts moving forward? I know that people need time to go away and reflect and maybe look at some of the, the footage back, but what's those early thoughts amongst the, amongst the squad? It's a difficult one um, because it's not like we got absolutely battered and we sort of just luckily found ourselves 2 nil up and you could go, well, how have they managed that? And then they were just constantly peppering our goal. That wasn't the case. Um, the three goals that we gave away were unexplainable, to be honest with you. So it, like we're all sitting there looking around at each other, sort of saying, like, well, we should have done better here. We Listen, we know the mistakes that we made, but it's very quiet. It was very quiet. But at the end of the day, we know we're only four games into a season, so we can't beat ourselves up. Obviously, we've had back-to-back losses, which is obviously not very good um, at all, but we've got an important training week coming up. We need to make sure that not only we work on shape, organisation, tactics and all that kind of stuff, we need to make sure that the team morale gets back to where we need it to be uh, because obviously we've got a very important weekend coming up next week, obviously away to Dover on the Saturday um, and then home to Dartford on the Monday. Um, So, after that, or sorry, going into that, we need to make sure that not only we know our individual roles going into it, but the team morale is right up there because obviously confidence after today is, is shot. Well, Josh, uh, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate you coming and being so honest today after in di- difficult circumstances, but good to see you back and uh, we'll see you very soon.